Hello and welcome back to episode 9 of our survival series. In the previous episodes we've been working on our node system, in fact creating a node for stone. In this episode though we want to go through and introduce a new node that's got some slightly different features and that is going to be the tree. The tree is going to feature the ability for to fall down as well as to leave a stump behind. So slightly different from the node that we use for stone. So let's get started. So we've got our rock node, let's now put in our tree node. So we're going to go into nodes and create a child of our node class. And we call this one node tree. And we're going to open this up and set up the meshes for this. So this mesh is going to be a little bit different. Now because we want the tree to fall, uh, we're going to leave behind a stump indicating that tree used to be there um, when we want to do damage to it. At the moment we are scaling the nodes by looking at the rock thing but with trees we don't want to do that we want the tree to fall down so this mesh is going to be the main mesh so we want that to be the tree we want to use and i've got a tree in my imports over here uh, trees and i'm going to use this one here bit of right there and i'm going to this back to 1.9 and reset all of its rotation to zero, to zero. Okay, so there's my tree. Now I want to leave behind a stump. So I actually want to put the stump in as another asset on this one. We go add, like mesh, and we're going to call this one stump. And we're going to choose the stump asset that I have in here instead. And then just a matter of lining these two up. Uh, it's not going to be perfect, but because it's not designed for it. But if you have the luxury of designing this yourself you can put this together um yourself in the modeling program to cut the model at the point where you want the tree stump to appear um but that that'll do you know we're not we're not going to hear to uh anything crazy that will do just fine okay so this thing will fall apart just like anything else so if i were to go into here i want to now add wood to my item data table so let's go to uh our inventory system Go to item data and we're going to add a wood to this. So we go add wood, call it wood, uh, fresh uh, bark from the local corner. Um, we need an icon, so I'm going to go to my trusty old uh, game icons.net over here. And we're going to search for some wood. And uh, let's find a good one to use. Let's go for. Uh, this one's not too bad. I like the mind the half log look. Um, also good as well. We use this log. We'll just download that PNG. There it is. And I'm going to bring that into my game here. The items first. So in the uh, items, put in the icons. Whoops, let's go there. Okay, and in icons here we've got the log. So now I can set that as there. Yeah, cool. Um, then I want to actually have the item that I can drop into the world. So I'm going to right-click on my test item, create a child blueprint of that, and I'm going to do wood. And in here we'll use a model this um i don't have think i have a model i could use for this well let's take a look um otherwise i've got an idea of what we could do instead um do, yep uh meshes trees yeah see nothing really really useful um i've got a branch actually we could use the branch i guess yeah we should use that branch yeah yeah, that'll do. Okay, cool. Uh, hit compile and save that. Okay, and I'm data component. We can go on here. We can set that to be the right. So that's the wood item that we can drop into the world. Um, we want to set that to the item class here. So we can wood. Uh, stack size. We'll do same as others. Ten, and item effects can have none on it. Save that. Okay, and that's that done. So now, if I go to my node tree, 
this has been set up to drop those items. If I go to the class defaults, we're going to go over to damage table, we'll leave alone. Resources, we're going to click on plus. And here we're going to type in the name of our row, which is. And the rest of that we can leave alone. Right, so at the moment, our tree will just scale in size. So if I drag it into my scene, there it is. Uh, let me move over here actually. Right, and go up to it and hit it. It starts to shrink, which looks a bit odd, okay? Because that's not what trees do. Um, so what we're gonna do is make our tree fall down. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, oh, first of all, separate the stump from the cube. We're gonna separate those two completely. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell this thing to animate to fall over. And we could do that with some physics. Or you can do an actual animation if you want, depending on how often we are doing that. Um, in this case, what we can do is we're going to make it just fall down with physics. So the first thing we need to do is tell this thing to enable physics. So on the event graph here, we don't want it to scale down. Now, the node at the moment is doing a scaling on rescale mesh over here. If I go into my node tree here and go to functions and override the rescale mesh and disconnect the parent rescale mesh hit compile and save this should no longer shrink so if i hit play and hit it nothing happens to its size okay the reason why is because this is now overriding the previous code that we had so i can leave that blank and have no problem with that whatsoever but what I do want to know is when the stat has run out. So on our stat component, we've got on damage being triggered, but we also want one for when it's completely depleted. So if I go to stat component and edit that one there, I'm going to go add an event dispatcher for this and do on depleted. Oh. And this is going to come out on this cool damage here. So when this effect health has been triggered, um over here yep affect health we want to check what the output value of this is so we're going to go health is less than or equal to zero plug that in and if it's false it'll do the normal return node that we had previously uh, but if it's true we want to tell it to call this on depleted health and then do the return node out here. Okay. So that if it reaches zero, we'll call on depleted health. So we just need to set up the binding for this. So if we go back to our node tree, click on the right uh, stack component, and on the right hand side down the bottom, you'll see on depleted health. Click on this, and it'll create the event for us. And the event on here, we're going to set, we're going to enable physics on it. So I'm going to go to my main mesh component here, drag it out. And from here, we're going to do simulate physics and turn it on. Okay, so if I were to test this out now with that simulating physics now, I'll hit it and you'll see it disappear. Now, the whole thing's disappeared, and that is because our stack component's default behavior is if we run out of health, it'll destroy the actor. We don't want to do it now in this case. So, what we're going to do is we're going to add an option to our stack component to not do that. So we're going to go over to our stack component and go to is alive. Now is alive here is a function we've got to check in every time we get take damage, whether or not they're still alive. And if so, if not, sorry, they will destroy. So I'm going to add a new variable to this. And we'll do a boolean called destroy on deplete. And basically what that means is that we're going to use this to determine whether or not we want to destroy this actor if it runs out of health. So we're going to drag that in between our destroy actor and the false branch. And we're going to put in another branch instead. Plug that into false. And if destroy on deplete here is true, it'll do the normal destroy actor. Okay. If it is false, we are going to turn nodes and we're still going to return is alive as false, but we're not going to destroy the actor. File and save that. So now, if 
if I go to my node tree, click on my stack component, and on the right hand side, I should be able to change destroy and deplete to be true or false. So I'm going to change on the parent node here to be true, so they're all destroyed by default. In the node tree, I'm going to turn off that particular one. Okay, so let's see that now with simulating physics and not being destroyed. Okay, so immediately you see some weirdness going on. And that is because you've got two objects, the stump and the tree, colliding with each other and causing some issues. So we're going to change it so it doesn't collide with the stump. Going to here, and we're going to go to the, the cube and the stump uh, components. So the main mesh of the tree is a world dynamic object. And we're going to tell this thing to ignore other world dynamic objects. In fact, actually, let's make the stump ignore it so it's not moving. So we go to stump, we'll change that to a custom, and tell the world dynamic here to ignore. I'll save. So let's take a look at that again. Okay, and you, see, you saw it drop. Now, it will fall over if I push it, but by default, it won't do anything. So if I keep pushing, it will fall over. There we go. Get some some weirdness going on there um but let's give it a little push to help things off so when i set simulate physics i'm actually going to add an impulse to it so i'll take this cube component and we're going to do impulse we do add impulse and by default we'll just do a random one random vector and we're going to scale that vector by another vector as well now i don't want it to impulse upwards so i'm going to leave z as zero i just want to affect, affect x and y and that is going to come from um uh, we'll just type in a value we'll just work out what we're going to need here this takes a bit of guessing depending on what kind of size of tree you're doing so we're going to do let's try 500 and see what that's like might be too much might be too little no Too little. Uh, oh wait, cement physics. Uh, oh, I made it to the stump. Hang on. Ah, oh, I am I made it to the wrong one. Uh, right. Let's do that again. I just realised I'm adding it twice there. box bit of wobble is a bit more so we'll give it a bit more oomph change that to 1000 and let's try that one out A little bit more. Let's now put an extreme value in this. Times it by ten. Put an extra zero in there. All oh, that. Save that. Try oh, that one. We may want to actually maybe delay it a little bit as well. A little delay in here. Tweak that to do that after half a second. Again, see what works best. Bit more power. So one thing to note when you're dealing with impulse is that mass is a big factor in this. So you may want to multiply this again but by the mass of the object. So we can do mass and we're going to multiply that by there. So if we were to test that out now, this might be a bit too much. Yep, there you go. <laughs> Way too much. Um, so let's turn it back down to 500. 
the bit of using mass is that if you were to put in a smaller object it won't be affected um in equal strength based entirely on its own weight bit jittery but it falls down okay perfect cool um if we want to make it less jittery i could probably give it a little push in the z we'll do that as 100 in the z up in the air a little bit it's not just skirting along the floor And you can tweak the various things like the mass, like the power. You can tweak those things to get different effects on it if you want. Um, you could also make this so it just that this disappears after a certain amount of time. So if we want to do something like that, we can do a set timer or a delay. If you want to do a delay, you can totally do that. Uh, we'll do an event. Uh, two seconds. Custom event. Clear. Funk. And we're going to take the cube here. And we are going to destroy the opponent. Game. There you go. Yeah, it got destroyed. There you go. Uh, and there you go. And if I go into my inventory, we should have some wood. Cool. So we can now collect wood and we can collect stone from different resource nodes. And there you go, we've now got our node for our tree done. And if you wanted to, you can go ahead and create a new splinter sort of Malaga effect like we did with the stone. So you can see splinters coming off it as you chop away at the tree. In the next episode though, we're going to start work on our crafting system. And the crafting system is going to take the materials that we're getting from our stone and from our tree to put together to create new items that we can place around in our scene. So we're going to make a start on that in the next episode. And that next episode is available to Patreon members right now on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady from just $1 a month. Thank you to all the Patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. And make sure you subscribe to the channel for future updates. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.